this corner of our planet has waited for mankind to realize its wealth. We're in North Central British Columbia, Canada's most western province, an expanse of territory reaching from the Rocky Mountains some 600 kilometers to the Pacific coast. This is the story of how, as the 1980s dawned, men, women, and vision combined to unlock the incredible potential of this frontier. A giant challenge, a giant step into the future. mid-1970s, an idea proposed in British Columbia caught the notice of business and political leaders in Japan. It held promise of enormous mutual benefit. Discussions and then negotiations began. What had been an idea developed form and substance. Canada's federal government joined the talks. People from both sides of the Pacific both sides of Canada focused intense attention on North Central British Columbia. February 10th, 1981. Years of negotiation reach formal success in Vancouver. Representatives from several Japanese steel companies, from two Canadian mining companies, Tech Corporation and Quintet, from the governments of British Columbia and Canada, meet to sign a monumental agreement. In 1984, just three years hence, eight million tons of coal a year will begin leaving northeastern British Columbia for Japan. The scale of the project prompted by the agreement, the deadline and the cost, the fact of deep recession at the time, attracted attention around the world. In three short years, catalyzed by a wealth of coal laid down millions of years before, an entire network of civilization would appear in this wilderness, making it part of the productive world. Spring 1982. On a mountain called Maconkey and another named Bull Moose, two peaks of many bearing coal in this wilderness, miners begin to move overburden to expose the seams. Men and machines move into surveyed forest in the vicinity. They begin to lay foundations for a community. On the map of the world, the name Tumbler Ridge would appear. 
Already, hundreds of kilometers of highways, some new, some upgraded, begin to thread through the mountains. The British Columbia Railway begins to build a spur line, 129 kilometers from the new mines to existing trackage. Two ranges of the Rockies will be tunneled, six and nine kilometers long. It will take 11 bridges to carry the line across rivers and canyons. A total of 840 kilometers of existing tracks to the coast will be upgraded. On a promontory called Ridley Island, just south of the city of Prince Rupert on the northwest coast. Scrub forest and musking are cleared to make way for one of the largest, most efficient super ports in the world. Ridley Island will become the second major port on Canada's Pacific Rim. Coal is the catalyst. Hundreds of millions of tons of it waiting in the Northeast. The first two mines. The first new town of Tumbler Ridge the roads and services people need. The new BC rail spur to existing lines, connecting at Prince George with Canadian national tracks, running west to the coast and Ridley Island. This is the social and transportation infrastructure the project will establish. Foundations for prosperity on which future generations will build. British Columbians who saw the opportunity, seized the initiative, and brought the principles together. The two Canadian mining companies, steel interests from Japan, two railroads, a port development consortium, two senior levels of government, and 55 international banks. A unique partnership between the public and private sector. Three years and two and a half billion dollars later, they would unlock this frontier's future. Behind the bare bones of the project, its physical and corporate components, lies a management challenge the complexity of which few can comprehend. By now, as progress intensifies across 600 kilometers of development, decisions by the thousand are taken daily. Trucks and trains, fleets of barges, converge constantly on dozens of destinations. The functions of planning, purchasing, and coordinating rival those of a major space shot. It took vision and courage to take the plunge at a time of world recession. 
testing sections of the electrification this week. Uh, the first train load of uh, product coal will be in approximately the first December as we've planned. Current in the short term, the project generates much needed economic activity. Looking ahead, it will help British Columbia's economy recover strength. Workers on site, we now have about uh, 100 left there, and uh, expect that'll be down to about 15 by the end of uh, November. Close to two years after the agreements were signed, literally thousands of people are at work on the project, including fully 10% of all construction workers in British Columbia. Hundreds, even thousands of kilometers away, the project's demand for supplies and services employs thousands more. Estimates reveal that the project generates the equivalent of one year's employment for between 16 and 20,000 people laying foundations for future jobs beyond estimate in northern British Columbia. The development is creating an invaluable reservoir of expertise in British Columbia. The know-how and experience similar projects in other places will need and call upon in future. Tunnel crews work from both ends simultaneously, along lines guided by laser beams. On August 21st, 1983, the crews meet in the last and longest of the two major tunnels. A simple ceremony celebrates the driving of the last spike on the BC Rail Spur Line. The line will diversify and double the railroad's annual tonnage. Locomotives built in Ontario arrive in Vancouver for transshipment north. This is the first electrified resource railroad in Canada, a quantum leap into the future technology of bulk transportation. Tumbler Ridge will be a totally autonomous community, taking its place within the municipal fabric of British Columbia.
Between five and 6,000 people will live here in the first years. The town is planned for 10,000. Bumblebee, buzz, buzz, buzz. Where there was nothing but wilderness before. The quintet mine on Mount McConkie prepares to deliver six million tons of coal a year. 170 ton trucks will dump raw coal at the top point of a conveyor system. Traveling at a third of a kilometer a minute, coal will be conveyed 13 kilometers to the valley below. This will be the largest coal mine in Canada, if not the world. The process of cleaning coal in this plant, removing rock and ash, washing it and drying it, recovering the dust, will begin just six months from now. 30,000 tons a day. The people working here and throughout the project will meet the deadline. In 120 days, the first coal will pour into waiting rail cars, be sealed with liquid plastic, and leave for Ridley Island. Some 50 kilometers from McConkie, the mine on Bull Moose Mountain hurries to completion. Two million tons of coal a year will be mined and processed here. The scale is smaller than Quintet, but the technology is every bit as advanced, the commitment to deadlines every bit as firm. Processed coal from the Bull Moose Mine will be trucked to the railroad loadout 40 kilometers away, not far from Tumbler Ridge. Late 1983, Ridley Island. A new superport on British Columbia's northwest coast makes ready to receive and deliver the load. Prince Rupert's dream of becoming a major seaport the terminus of an east-west corridor across Canada nears reality. Soon, just two months from now, grease and electrical energy will pump and pulse through the sinews of these metallic monsters, animating their marvelous technology. tons of coal a day, 10,000 more at night, will be arriving for Japan. Trains will unload without stopping, two cars at a time, 100 tons each, 100 cars in two hours. In winter, heaters will unfreeze the loads. Ridley Island will fill a super ship in eight hours flat. Already far to the west, the first ship charts course for the superport. What we are witnessing in this magnificent land is the largest mining and transportation development ever undertaken in Canada. Yet it is more than that. The quest for prosperity, for jobs, for the good lives people will enjoy here has not been at the expense of the environment. The wilderness has also been respected. 
Before a single stone was turned, every aspect of the environment was studied, every effort made to protect and preserve its values for all to enjoy for all time. was wild country before, beyond the reach of all but the most adventurous, has become accessible. Within this frontier are the new workplaces, the completed project in all its diversity blending into the fabric of the land. Winter, 1983. The commodity which triggered the future of this land, the first coal, begins to move. Tumbler Ridge, a community is thriving. 